In 14.8, we are going to learn to use Lagrange multiplier. Lagrange multiplier is a method for us to find the extreme values of f subjected to the constraint g equals to zero. Here, the variable involved here, it could be three variables or maybe just two variables x and y. No matter it is two variable or three variables or even more, the more important thing is both g, f and g, they have the same number of variables. Mm -hmm. So in order to find the extreme values of f subjected to the constraint g equals to zero, we will find the values of x, y, z, and lambda that simultaneously satisfy these two equation. That is the gradient of f equals to lambda gradient of g, and also g equals to zero, where lambda, it is what we call as the Lagrange multiplier. So this type of method is applied when we want to, when we are given a constraint for us to find a maximum or minimum of f. For example, let's say if we want to find the greatest and smallest value of the function f equals to xy, takes on the ellipse x squared over 8 plus y squared over 2 equals to 1. Then, the very first step that we need to take is to identify the objective function and the constraint. So from here, it's very straightforward that the objective function, it is f, which is x, y. And then the constraint, it will be the function. Remember just now, when we talk about the g, g, it is equals to 0. So here, this g, we have to bring the 1 to the other side and take the whole expression as g. So g equals to x squared over 8 plus y squared over 2 minus 1 equals to 0. After we have identified the objective and the constraint, we start to solve the gradient of f equals to lambda gradient of g. So gradient of f, since this is a function of two variables, we are going to uh, to have two components, i component and j component, where the i component is del f del x and the j component is del f del y. So the i component we get y and the j component we get x. Whereas the gradient of g, when we differentiate this one with respect to x, we get 2x over 8 and simplify it, you get x over 4, which is here. And then when we differentiate this expression with respect to y, we get 2y over 2, that gives us y. So we get these two gradients, then we just put them into this equation and try to solve it. This is, this is the repetition of what we have done just now. Okay, When we equalize the i component, we get y equals to lambda x over 4 that will give us lambda equals to 4y over x, whereas the j component will give us x equals to lambda y, and that will give us lambda equals to x over y. Next, we continue to solve the simultaneous equation, seeing that both of this equation, equation 2 and 3, they are having the same left-hand side, Therefore, we can equalize the right-hand side, okay, that is 4y over x equals to x over y. And then we do the cross multiplication and we will get 4y squared equals to x squared. And we name it as equation number 4. Then substitute this equation number 4 into equation 1, which is the constraint. The constraint, it is given here, which I labeled earlier, okay. We substitute 4y, uh, well, it's 4y squared equals to x squared. So we substitute inside here the x squared, substitute with 4y squared, and we will have 4y squared over 8, uh, over 8. That will give us, if we simplify, we'll get y squared over 2. So y squared over 2 plus y squared over 2 minus 1, you get y squared minus 1 equals to 0. See here? This is, this is the equation we'll get, and by solving this equation, we get y equals to positive and negative 1. 
So we have to find out what are the axes when x when y is equal to 1 and also when y is equal to negative 1. So we substitute this value into the fourth equation. For easier calculation, okay, we substitute inside this equation and we get when y is equal to 1, we get x equals to positive negative 2. That will give us two points, which is 2, 1 and also negative 2, 1. And when y is equal to negative 1, when we substitute inside in equation number 4, we get x equals to positive negative 2 as well. And this will give us another two points, that is 2, negative 1 and also negative 2, negative 1. So since we have four points altogether, what we need to do is to find the f. Remember, our objective function is to get the greatest and smallest value of f. Okay, so we have to find out what is this f. List out the points in a table, and then find the value of f, substitute the point into the x and y into the function, and we get 2 or negative 2. So only two values. Therefore, this 2 will say it's the maximum, and the negative 2 will be the minimum because it's the lower, lower value compared to 2. So we can make a conclusion saying that the greatest value of f is 2 at 2, 1, and negative 2, negative 1. And the smallest value is negative 2 at 2, negative 1, and negative 2, 1. This is an example of two variable, a function of two variable. Next, we'll take a look at an example of three variable. Let's say here, we want to find the point P on the planet, uh, sorry, on the plane 2x plus y minus z minus 5 equals to 0 that is closest to the origin. So the very first step again, we want to identify what is the objective function and the constraint. You, from here we can only see one equation, but we are looking for the point that is closest to the origin. You, if you look here, our objective function I gave here it is f equals to x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Now, how do we get this one? Let's say if d is uh, refers to distance, then to find the distance from the point p x y z to the origin, which is having the coordinate of zero zero zero, the distance it is calculated by taking the square root of x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared plus z minus 0 squared. And then this one can be simplified to become square root of x squared plus y squared plus x squared. And since d is non-negative, it is square root function, so d can't be negative. Okay, it's non-negative and it increases or decreases when d squared increases or decreases. And also when d is minimum, d square minimum will get the minimum as well. So with this reason, we'll take d square as our objective function for easier calculation. Without the square root, it will be much, much easier. So here, this will be our objective function. Keep in mind, this is not the distance. So later, if you want to find the distance, you still have to find the square root of it. Next, the constraint, it is given from this equation, so the right hand side is already zero, so we'll just take this one as our g. So our constraint is g, I'm sorry, this is g x y z, okay, g x y z equals to 2x plus y minus z minus 5 equals to zero. So from here, I label the constraint as equation number one. Now here, the next step we want to solve is to solve the gradient of f equals to lambda gradient of g. So you can see from here, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just put the first equation here so that we have something to refer to. Okay, and then when we find the gradient of f, we will get 2x, 2y, 2z. Okay, and then for gradient of g, we'll have 2, 1, and negative 1. So here, when we try to solve this equation, we'll get 2x equals to 2 lambda, 2y equals to lambda, and 2z equals to negative lambda. 
and I label them as equation two, three, and four respectively. And from equation number two, we'll get, well, once we simplify equation number two, we'll get x equals to lambda. And then from equation number three, uh, we'll get y equals to lambda over two, and z will be equals to negative lambda over two from equation four. So perhaps here I should write here from equation two until four. Okay, so I'll label all these three equations as the set of equation number five. And I substitute from here, we, we can't get any value, but we can try to sub substitute all these x, y, and z in terms of lambda. We substitute them into the first equation. So we substitute set of equation five into one, and we get two lambda, okay, two lambda, plus lambda over 2 minus negative lambda over 2 minus 5 equals to 0. And this will give us lambda equals to 5 over 3. So once we get 5 over 3 for lambda, then we just substitute inside all these equations, and we will get the value of x, y, and z, which is x is 5 over 3, y is 5 over 6, and z equals to negative 5 over 6. And this is the point that we are going to substitute inside the function. And we'll get f equals to 25 over 6. Now remember, this 25 over 6 is d squared. So in order to find the distance, it is d. So we have to find the square root of this value. We'll get 5 over square root of 6. So after we have found all these values, We'll just answer the, for the conclusion, we'll say the point 5 over 3, 5 over 6, negative 5 over 6 is the point nearest to the origin with the distance of 5 over square root of 6 units. Even though, even though the question didn't ask for the distance, it is always a good practice if we could, we could just give the distance as well.